for some analysis on this. We are joined by Lukona Amguni in our Durban studio and Sanusha Naidu, who's joining us via Skype from Cape Town. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Lukona, uh, we cannot deny the fact that Helen Ziller is great at playing this political game. Well, uh, good, uh, good, if good evening, Shehan. I'm not so sure whether the latest developments are a result of Helen Ziller having on her own volition really played uh, these cards. I think it took a bit of convincing her from those who were opposed to my manner's leadership and vision. You will remember, Shehan, when the DA was going to their Congress last year uh, beginning, uh, there was a document circulated having been crafted by Michael Cardo uh, and I think Kevin Davis, and that was seen as the moment when it crystallized that there are clear divisions within the Democratic Alliance, and we saw other leaders writing rebuttals like Mahashule Ghana. I think it is all those divisions that have now culminated to this moment my suspicion is that those opposed to Musi, when they looked among themselves, they could not find a worthy leader. They actually had a vote of no confidence on themselves. They didn't think anyone among themselves would be a leader that appeals enough uh, inside the party and to the broader public. So they had to go and fetch Helen Zill out of retirement. And I think making her own considerations and probably seeing a moment of shining once more in the political landscape of South Africa, uh, she thought, okay, this is the moment to come and play a rescue mission uh, of the DA. Yeah, so you make it seem as if she was the trump card for those people who oppose Musi Maimane. But Sanusha, I'm hoping you have a different version of how strategic Helen Ziller really is as a politician. Yeah, I mean, I think to a large extent, I, I, I agree with Lukoni. I think, you know, in a sense that Helen Ziller decides, I'm going to go out to the Institute of Race Relations and play out my twilight years as a researcher, academic, do some kind of critical reflection, thinking about where I'm going, uh, put all of my, my experience into a research, a body of research work. And then very, very soon after that, she decides that she's not going to be that, that fellow at the Institute. Suddenly, the Institute is writing all these very interesting dynamics. So it could have been an extension of what has been in her mind for a long time. And that is perhaps there's a need to try and create a, a, a kind of alternate DA in the political landscape of South Africa. Not just Helen Ziller. I think even uh, people that were outside of, of, of the DA, people like patrons, funders, benefactors, etc., who were not very happy with where the DA was going. And of course, the, uh, the, the catalyst was the fact that the DA had lost uh, its footprint, both in terms of its electoral uh, votes, as well as the fact that it didn't grow its electoral footprint. And of course, it, was, it, 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 it lost the, uh, the the city of Johannesburg and so forth in terms of not being the official opposition in KZN and so forth. So I think to a large extent it was whether or not Helen Ziller and co or, or those that were that were basically quoting a thought they could create an alternate party to the DA or whether it was better now to strategically come back and try and capture the party and do that through the federal exec chair position yeah. and that's where it became very interesting. Yeah, so Lukona, is Helen Zilla actually worth all this drama and will the DA see those people who left them to vote for the FF Plus come back? Uh, Shahan, it's early days to make statements like that. Also because I think we, we oversimplify what happened in terms of the DA losing electoral support. Um, maybe not all people that w did not vote for the DA went to the Freedom Front Plus. There was the Ramaphosa effect in the ANC. We saw people splitting their votes in the Western Cape quite remarkably where they voted provincially for the Democratic Alliance or and then nationally voted for the ANC because they were backing Cyril Ramaphosa's leadership. You will remember, Shehan, when Tony Leon came here to Durban sometime uh, last year after Ramaphosa's election at Nazrek, he made statements that had to sort of uh, be condemned by the provincial leader of the DA because he appeared to be giving support to Cyril Ramaphosa. So I don't think the theory that, you know, everybody who went, went to the Freedom Front Plus uh, captures the complexity of what happened. We saw in these last elections quite a significant decline in terms of voter turnout. Are we saying that people who voted for the DA didn't choose to stay away this time around? So I think there are a lot of complexities, and it is this narrow, narrowism 
in analysis of what might have led to the electoral decline of the DA that may actually make the party be in much more crisis because it will be solving the wrong problem. And I do think that the DA has taken a massive gamble to do a great damage on an electoral loss that I believe is fairly insignificant mm. compared to other players within the political landscape. And this may have been uh, approached with greater nuance than it has been. All right, Sanusha, last question to you. And this, of course, is whether everything that's happening in the Democratic Alliance can actually reassure its voters, because I would be worried if I were one of them. Well, absolutely. I think most voters are worried. I'm just on a radio show last night. Some some uh, DA voters came out being very disillusioned and even talking about the relevance of the party. I think the the, the challenge for the DA, and I and I agree to a, to a certain extent with what Lukona is saying about you know don't put everything into the bag of the fact that they lost votes to the Freedom Front Plus. There was definitely a level in which apathetic voters who were previously DA may have not come out to vote. Also, we've had a a, a lower voter turnout in terms of what we were talking about. But also I think the big challenge for the DA now is to keep what they currently have, the traditional voters, to try and tr grow the party from now till 2021, to try and cre create some policy coherence to where they're going and what they are standing for, because that doesn't seem to find traction as well. They don't seem to have a policy coherence. There's, it's a very incoherent party at the moment. And of course, the big challenge is that they've lost a center a left, the left of the party and the center is not holding. It seems to be moving to a, to a center right and right of the center. Yeah, it never is a dull day in politics in South Africa. I think we can say that with all the assurance in the world. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate both of you. We've been speaking to political analyst Lukona Amguni in our Durban studio and Sanusha Naidu via Skype from Cape Town.